Thanks again for joining me on Sealed for Good. This week we're talking about swimming pools and waterproofing those and this would be one of the applications that is the most testing and challenging out there just based on any structure that holds water. A lot of attention to detail needs to happen and not just with a waterproofing application but things that happen over the membrane afterwards uh, in pools and in a country like ours where pools are becoming more and more popular and affordable in the marketplace. There's new pools and there's retrofitted pools that need to be repaired. So I'm going to talk about firstly the basics and it's the surface prep. So let's assume we're talking about new swimming pools here. If you're doing a new pool, you need to make sure that firstly the substrate is sound and stable. Many times the concrete that's used in a pool structure may have additives in there um, as part of the design. And a lot of the times when those concrete areas are laid or shot created, you can get those residues that come to the top of the, the concrete surface. You need to check this, the integrity of the surface, ensure that it's sound, solid, stable. If you need to grind or uh, prepare that area, do that. Uh, and you can check that with some random um, methods of in, ensuring the integrity of the surface is ready to go. But if in doubt, uh, yeah, give it a grind, ensure that the concrete is opened. Um, but in a condition that's able to be uh, uh, take a membrane. The opposite to that, if you've got voids or empty spots, ensure that they are filled and patched first and patched with a compound that is strong enough to be almost like the MPA strength of the concrete. Don't go and use some sort of putty fill or some cheap mortar filler that you might use on an internal masonry wall for a swimming pool. Ensure that the, uh, the concrete repair material is suited for that area. Primers. This one comes up a lot. In the, in the grip set range, 99% of the time we specify our grip set level wise slurry. And we do that even though we've got things like our E60, which can be used. But um, whether it's an underground pool or a suspended pool, we don't believe that uh, the negative pressure that's going to happen in a pool is going to be an impact in terms of requiring a prime that can handle that. For the fact is that you've got a finish on top of that uh, membrane system and the and the uh, weight of the water where you're not going to have anything blow out. However, many guys do like to use a, um, a negative hydrostatic coating, so something like the E60 works very very well. But ensure that you prime properly and that the surface um, is prepared to take that primer. And then, like anything, surface preparation, priming, and the membrane goes on top. So our membrane system we go with is the, is the Gripset 2P. Most of the time we can use our C1P and in saying that, yes we do say C1P can go on a damp surface but again for a pool specification we would encourage the 11Y slurry to be used first. Once you've got that, then you need to look at all the detailing pieces. Now if you've got large swimming pools, particularly Olympic sized pools, it would be very very common to find an expansion joint or a movement joint within the pool structure. You need to accommodate for that. We have our elasto system. There are other sealants that would be incorporated into the tile finish there, but we use our elasto over any expansion joint because it, it can accommodate the expansion contraction of that joint. Wall floor junctions with pores of pools need to be pores of pools need to be uh, addressed. Make sure you've incorporated that into your application. Uh, things like sealants that guys might tend to use in areas like decks and balconies and roofs and internal areas aren't always suitable for a pool environment. So don't go using a bond breaker that you might use in a bathroom under a pool membrane. Okay, that is just a, a no-no. Use a system that is designed to handle immersion. Whatever product you're using under, in that pool application, whether it be the primer or the membrane or the bond breaker, it should be able to handle immersed conditions on its own. If not, question what you're using. Okay, that is, that's, uh, that's one of our rules and that's how we always go about it. So once you've done the detailing section, you then obviously apply the membrane to specification. As I mentioned, we've got our 2P and our grip set C1P that we have in our range. And they are applied to um, specification with the, film, the correct film thickness. And then there's the piece on top of that, which is the tiling space. Or you might find it's a marble sheen or a rendered finish. Now let's just quickly go with the marble sheen render. If it's a rendered finish on top, again, it needs to have a render that can handle immersed conditions and we would use our 11 y additive in that and then on top of that render if they want to go with um, the pool paint finishes like a chlorinated rubber pool paint or a um, another type of pool paint, epoxy pool paint that goes on top that can go over the render they are solvent based systems most of the time 
those products, but it can go over the, a render like that. If it's a marble sheen, <clears throat> ensure that the marble sheen finish also has additives in there that can handle the immersed environment. And talk to the applicators or the, the guys in the pool business that are actually doing those finishes on top of the membrane. But if we go with the uh, tiling application, it's important that with tiling, and we see this, it is the more popular one, that they tile to the standard. Things like expansion joints, movement joints, are critical. You know, I've heard a couple of pool guys saying they've laid tiles of their lives in pools and never worried about an expansion or a movement joint. Well, maybe you've, you've just been riding the luck there, but the, the fact is you've got an external pool or potentially an internal pool, you've got thermal movement, you've got expansion contraction from tiles, either from the sun or from a heated pool, and that is actually going to have a play on the movement of the tiles and the stresses of the tile, and, on, and that stress then goes onto the membrane. A movement joint allows for that, that, uh, those stresses to be accommodated without compromising the membrane seal, and that's very important to take care of and take note of. And ensure that if you are a tile that might be doing both, the waterproofing and the tiling, or you're working with a tile that's going over top of the membrane, that where they're going to put their movement joints, they understand that it should be incorporated in the tile during the laying of the tile. I, got, I was exposed to a horrific repair job over the last couple of months where the tiler had laid the tiles over the membrane, then decided to grind through the tile, a mosaic tile that was on the, on the membrane, the movement joints. And what happened, inevitably it failed. When those tiles were pulled up, you can actually see the grind, the grinder mark through the through the membrane into the render below the membrane surface, and that's all about lack of care. You know, it was an afterthought. I'll just put a silicon joint in to this area of the tile without planning where it needs to go in beforehand and not grouting that joint. And these are things that just it all comes back to as I always say about planning and preparation. So get that piece right. It is so important. Otherwise. You know, if, you've, if you bugger a tile up, you can pull the tile up and you can fix it. But if you bugger the membrane up, you've got to pull the tiles up, fix the membrane, and it's a more costly and a more time-consuming exercise, and it leaves a shitty taste in the mouth of your customer, okay? And so get that right. It is, these are not jobs that you can just do and just walk away from and not worry about what happens afterwards. Have the discussion with your builder, your client, about who their after-trades are, how they're going to tackle it, or have a discussion with those guys and let them know. Now, I'm not accusing all tilers of not knowing what they're doing, but it's all about ensuring that if you are, if your work's going to be there and you're signing off the integrity of that waterproof project, that it, yes, you've specified something that can hold water, make sure that whatever happens afterwards <clears throat> doesn't compromise the work you've done. That is really, really important. The correct sealants that I mentioned before about the waterproofing, you're not using sealants with the waterproofing side, but with the tiling application, obviously a good pool grade silicon. And then the most important piece is the tile adhesive that is used in pools, okay? It needs to handle the immersed environment. So all tile adhesive manufacturers will have a specification on the type of tile adhesive they have that is suitable for pool environments and handle those immersed conditions. And then you've also got the pool coping on the outside and how you're going to adhere that and ensure there's some large stones that are used around pool copings these days. Are they gonna stress the membrane? On our systems, if we think there's anything that's going to be um, quite abrasive or damaging, we would put something like our 11 YDM protective coating over the membrane, which can handle immersion and let those stones and tiles be fixed to it without any issues at all. It does sound like a lot of common sense, uh, but pools are challenging. And the, it comes down to, as I said, what we always say, surface preparation, that detailing piece, the membrane, ensuring the membrane that you are using is specified and designed for a pool application, the tiling application that goes on top, and just ensuring that everything is scheduled in the right way. Um, you know, you want to make sure as well with the membrane that if there are, if you're the builder, the client, you should see the specification from the waterproofer, just so you can ensure that everything's been ticked off and done the, the correct way. Great tradesmen are transparent; they've got nothing to hide, and they'll make sure that they're, it's open for them. And if you need um, something from a, a, a specification right from Gripset. Our technical department always offer that, and we can custom make it for a retro pool as well if it's, a, it's, for, if it's for a repair job, which there are many out there. This is one that uh, comes up a lot with, with pools. We see this also with uh, things like um, uh, spa baths externally. The same rules apply. 
It's just about planning. Don't just go and rush the job and think, I'll get a bucket of this membrane out and start using it. It's all about the planning. Get that right because it is an expensive one to fix up later on. And as I said, if it is a situation where it's a, you got clients in the home, you don't want to have to put them out and um, empty pools out, particularly when they come into the summer months when they want to use them. And you got three months with a, a pool and empty hole in the ground being repaired. If you've got any further comments on pool applications or photos to show us, please let us know. And as I mentioned, if you've got anything that you'd like from us for a swimming pool specification, we'd be more than happy to give you our system that is proven and works for either a suspended or an in-ground pool. Thanks again for joining me on this week of Silver Good. I'll see you next time.